Hello Guardians, my name is Chris aka Big C and welcome to Legends of Destiny Tower Talk. Haven't done one of these in a while, that's mostly because there hasn't been a whole lot to talk about that hasn't been covered to death on the Destiny community. Um, today I am here though to talk about the one thing that everyone is absolutely excited for and that of course is Rise of Iron. Rise of Iron releases and as of this recording, four days. We are so close, and I'm going to tell you a couple things that I personally cannot wait to check out in Rise of Iron. So, of course, all of this is based on my personal opinions, as well as, you know, previous experience with the game. Um, so, you know, take everything that I say with a grain of salt in terms of whether it's, you know, it actually turns out to be as great as I think it will be. Um, so, of course... Number one, first thing I am the most excited for for Rise of Iron is going to be the Wrath of the Machine raid. Now, of course, whenever a brand new raid hits the Destiny community, everybody goes crazy. Raids are by far the most inventive and most unique way to play Destiny. And anytime a new raid drops, everybody is excited. So, Wrath of the Machine, of course, is the brand new raid that is going to be coming alongside Rise of Iron. We know it's set in the Cosmodrome on Earth. It's going to be mostly Fallen, um, more than likely Siva Fallen, and that there's a Death Zamboni somehow involved. Um, now, there have been some interesting comments made by a couple different people with Bungie. Um, one comment said that we don't want you to take, you know, eight hours like King's Fall did the first time people tried to go through it. So I don't expect it to be quite as mechanic heavy as King's Fall was. Um, I really enjoy King's Fall. I think it's a great raid, but it is one of those things where it's not very forgiving, and if one person messes up, you're kind of screwed. Um, I'd like to see a little less of that and a little more, you know, just excitement. I mean, I like mechanics, and I think having interesting mechanics is very important for a raid, but I would also like to see, you know, more like interesting combat situations kind of similar to the vault of glass and that's part of what makes vault of glass stand out as the best raid in destiny's history um but i am very excited to play wrath of the machine i think it's going to be a lot of fun i will be streaming it on the first day um which of course is september 23rd so be sure to check that out on twitch as well as youtube later number two the story I am a sucker for story. Story is one of my favorite aspects of any video game. If it doesn't have a great story, it hurts. There's not a lot of games that I can say that I love that don't have great stories. Destiny is kind of an exception, because up until year two, Destiny didn't have a great story. It had pieces of one, but it didn't quite know how to assemble those pieces. Um, Taking King really showcased what Bungie can do as a storyteller and what the Destiny universe has in it in terms of story. Um, Taking King's story was absolutely spectacular and it really helped draw you back in and especially it drew in people who may were, maybe were turned off by the lack of story or lack of cohesion um, from Vanilla Destiny. So I'm very curious about the storyline of Rise of Iron. We know Lord Saladin's involved. We know the Siva Infective Fallen are involved. Um, it's a really interesting concept. The fact that you get to become an Iron Lord is great. Um, so I cannot wait to dive into that. Um, I have seen the video of the first mission. I'm not going to go into any details on it because for those of you who do not want to be spoiled. But based on that, I am very excited for the direction that the storyline of Destiny will be going in Rise of Iron. Now, we do know there's only going to be five story missions, which I wish there were more. I'm sure everybody wish there were more, but if they're really good and there's a lot of quests to follow afterwards, I think we can kind of forgive it. Taking King only had eight, to be fair, but they were all really well done and all really well crafted, and I hope the storyline for Rise of Iron is just as good. Also, cinematics... Please give us lots of amazing, gorgeous cinematics. That's one of the best things that Taken King did, is really introduced a lot of great cinematics, and I hope that continues with Rise of Iron. All right, number three. New exotics to chase. Of course, one of the biggest things about Destiny is the loot system. 
That's one of the best things about it. It's a game where your focus is to obtain loot. So of course, anytime new loot is available is great, but especially new exotics. Exotics, of course, are the thing everybody wants to chase, and, I mean, who doesn't want more to chase? So, so far, we only know about five exotic weapons. Nothing about armor, but we know about five exotic weapons. Those, of course, are the Trespasser, which is currently available in the game, so if you have not acquired it yet, you can obtain this exotic burst fire sidearm in the game currently. I did a couple videos on it, including my moments of triumph where I obtained it, um, so you can see gameplay of that on my YouTube channel, of course, on Big C TV as part of Legends of Destiny. Um, so we know about that one. We know about two returning exotics that they have confirmed, and those, of course, are Gallahorn, yeah, and Thorn. So two returning, one new one. We also know about the Nemesis Star, which is an exotic machine gun. We don't know what its exotic perk is, but we know there is an, a new exotic machine gun. We know about um, the exotic version of the Kvazdov, which is the original gun you get in the game. There is a new exotic version that is quest-based. Um, it looks pretty promising. Uh, so that one's going to be pretty exciting. And then we do know about a last exotic, a fifth exotic that is obtainable in the raid. It's a pulse rifle that kind of has wolf pack rounds where like it shoots projectiles that spread around. It looks fantastic. Those are the only ones we know about right now. I'm sure there are more. I hope there's a lot more because, I mean, you always want something to chase. If you run out of things to chase, the game gets kind of boring and you run into giant lulls and doldrums. So I really hope Bungie really stepped up their game with exotics. They brought in a whole bunch of great new ones, hopefully some great new armor pieces, just lots of new exotic things for us to chase, as well as great legendaries. So um, more loot is always great. We know the armor sets look good. They've revealed a whole bunch of info on new armor sets. Um, so the armor looks good. I just hope the weapons are there to match the amazing looking armor. So new exotics, new weapons, new exotic armor, all that good stuff is going to be fantastic. Number four, Archon's Forge. So Bungie has always been kind of chasing that replayable PVE content by trying to come up with a whole bunch of different things besides the raid that you could do repeatedly that would just keep your interest. Both Court of Oryx and Prison of Elders had certain aspects that kind of worked, but eventually they got dull. Court of Oryx got especially dull real fast. Um, so Bungie now has to find a way to step up their game and make something that people actually want to play. Of course, the most important thing of that is going to be loot, which is a problem they actually fixed. Um, so Archon's Forge is supposed to be kind of a combination of Court of Oryx and Prison of Elders, it is a in the plague lands activatable new section um, where you insert some kind of rune and you jump in and you kill waves upon waves upon enemies. So that part sounds kind of like Court of Oryx, but the waves kind of sound like Prison of Elders. Um, eventually, you fight a boss and then you can obtain loot from that boss. So it sounds like an interesting combination of both Court of Oryx and Prison of Elders. I did see some gameplay of it. It does look pretty fun. Um, and we do know there is a complete armor set that you can only get from Archon's Forge. So I'm really excited to learn more about it. I'm really excited to jump in and try it. I hope it is just as replayable as we hope it's going to be. Um, because otherwise, I'm, I'm a little worried we're going to run out of content real fast. But uh, here's hoping that is not the case. Number five, Supremacy. Brand new Crucible mode that is coming to Destiny Rise of Iron. Um, the idea is similar to Kill Confirmed, which is a game mode that's existed for a while in the Call of Duty universe, where if you kill a Guardian, they drop their crest. If you pick up their crest, you get a point. However, if someone kills you and collects your crest, they get a point. If you're one of your teammates dies, you kill the guy who killed them, you collect your teammate's crest, you deny the other team a point. So, rather than focusing on kills, although kills are important, um, it's focusing on the collection of the crest. So I think this is going to create a very interesting dynamic. 
Again, I've seen gameplay of it based on a few different appearances that Bungie has done. Um, it looks really interesting. I'm very excited to try it out myself. Um, of course, we just got private matches, so I'm especially excited to check out Supremacy with some, you know, on specific maps, try to learn all the strategic points for it. Um, but Supremacy looks really interesting, um, and I'm very, very excited to try out the brand new game mode. So those are five things that I'm excited about that are coming to Destiny Rise of Iron, of course, on Tuesday, September 20th. That's coming up very, very soon. Um, now, before we go, I have a couple more things I want to talk about. First, there are two different things you can try now that are part of Rise of Iron. The first is, of course, the Trespasser. Um, it is an exotic sidearm. It's already available in the game. The only way you need to obtain it is either from a legendary special engram, an exotic special engram, um, that you can obtain it that way. You can also get boots that are higher light level than 335, although that doesn't really do much. So, I mean, you can do it if you really want to brag, but, I mean, I would just save your engrams if you've been stockpiling. Um... So, try it out. It's a really fun gun. I've been using it a lot in the Crucible, and it melts. So, if you enjoy, you know, a nice counter to something like The Last Word, close up with, uh, in Crucible, um, Trespasser might be your new favorite gun. So, I would definitely do yourself a favor. Try to find it. It gives you something to do in addition to looking out for Destiny viruses, which is another interesting thing that they just dropped, like, today. Um, you can collect viruses. So... Those are a couple of interesting things. And then, of course, the other is private matches. We do have access to private matches now. Private matches is also available for anybody who owns Destiny the Taken King on Xbox One or PS4. So even if you're not buying Rise of Iron, you will still have access to private matches. Of course, that means you can do all kinds of custom games with your friends, try out different things. You can complete bounties in them, which is pretty awesome. Um, you can collect grimoire you can't do quests which makes sense um but there's a lot of cool things you can do in private matches um the other day i played private matches with a couple friends of mine and we did 5v5 elimination and that was really wild so i'm excited to try other interesting game types like that um in private matches so those are two ways that you can enjoy a taste of Rise of Iron already, even though we're only a few days away from the launch. Um, speaking of the launch, before I go, I want to share with everyone the content schedule for Big C TV and Legends of Destiny's Rise of Iron coverage. So, Rise of Iron goes live on the East Coast at 5 a.m. Eastern Time on September 20th. I will be up. <laughs> I will be up. I will be streaming. You can enjoy watching me play Rise of Iron insanely early in the morning. <laughs> but I will do it because I am too excited about this. Uh, so I will be streaming pretty much all day from September 20th till September 24th, which is Saturday. Um... So, all kinds of Destiny Rise of Iron content. I'll be playing through the story. I'll be playing Crucible. I'll be playing Quest. I'll be grinding. I'll check out Bellwinter's Peak. We'll be checking out the new vendor roles. We'll be doing everything you could possibly want to see from Rise of Iron. I will cover it. And, of course, it's all going to accumulate with our raid attempt on Friday the 23rd. Not exactly sure what time, but we will be doing an attempt for the new raid on September 23rd, which is the day it drops. So, lots of great Destiny content coming to both Big C TV, well, Big C TV, um, which is the host of Legends of Destiny. So, be sure to check all of that out throughout the course of the week. I will be streaming, I will be broadcasting, I will be posting videos after I complete them. So you are going to get an absolute overload of everything you could possibly want to know about Rise of Iron next week. So that's going to do it for this episode of Big C TV Presents Legends of Destiny Tower Talk. My name is Chris. I will see you next week in Fellwinter's Peak Guardians.
Peace out.